This is the new Z Fold 4. It's probably by far the best phone for productivity because it can double as a portable tablet, which I never thought would be this useful. It's not only great for watching content, reading documents, but surprisingly, it's a pretty good note-taking platform as well. And with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, it pulls significantly ahead of the S22 Ultra in terms of raw speed and gaming experience. And this year, it's got some pretty good cameras too. But being a folding phone, it does still have some quirks that can be problematic. One thing that I didn't find to be problematic is the main display. It's a 7.6 inch 120Hz OLED with an aspect ratio of about 6x5. So it doesn't just feel like a really large phone. The issue with typical large phones is that due to the tall aspect ratio, you can't really comfortably read documents that are meant for paper. For example, this document. You have to zoom in and then scroll horizontally to read each entire line. However, on the fold, it's a much better time. Since this main screen is much wider, you can see entire lines without having to scroll side to side. It's been very helpful for me reading textbooks and other documents on the go. But of course, the drawback is that the screen has a crease down the middle. I don't find it super noticeable when looking at it directly unless there's reflected light then it's pretty noticeable, but you can try tilting the phone a bit to avoid it. I rarely touch the center of the screen, so I also hardly ever feel the crease. One of the best things is that you can multitask really well on this big screen. It runs Android 12L, the tablet Android, and it has this taskbar, which not only makes switching between apps much faster, but you can also directly drag apps from here into a split screen or pop-up view. The Fold runs the tablet version of apps too. For example, Chrome has separate tabs at the top. But my favorite feature of the main screen is that it supports S Pen, and the display is actually very stiff. Even when pressing down on it with the pen, I cannot really feel it flex at all. The Fold Edition S Pen does have a spring-loaded tip, but it only activates under a ton of pressure. I've never activated it when writing normally, so it just feels like a normal S Pen and it's not really soft at all. You will feel the crease if you draw a line across it, but when just writing text, I actually don't really feel it. So a surprisingly normal writing experience from a folding phone. And because the screen is 120Hz OLED, I think it actually feels better than a 10th gen iPad for writing. It might not be big enough for writing all your notes on it, but I mostly only write math stuff by hand, so this is a genuinely viable alternative to a tablet for me. The Fold S Pen won't scratch the main screen since it has a soft tip, but the screen's not glass and it's much more prone to scratches as it still relies on a pre-installed screen protector. The good thing is, the screen protector is actually barely noticeable. You can't really see any obvious outlines of it. The long-term durability of this phone is still a concern. This year, it's supposedly 45% stronger than last gen, but I guess only time will tell. The super thin bezel and the underscreen front camera on this thing really brings together the all screen look. The underscreen camera is still pretty visible, but it's much less distracting than a hole punch. Overall, this big screen is really great for watching stuff, playing games, everything looks good and feels super smooth on it. And also for its size, the Z Fold is really not that heavy. It's only 10% heavier than the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and it's much lighter than the iPad mini. So holding it for a long time isn't too bad at all. And when this thing is folded, it feels almost normal. The cover screen is pretty narrow, but at 6.2 inches, it's good enough to text people or do some basic tasks on it. It's also a pretty good 120Hz OLED screen. And the narrowness is actually really nice for navigating it with one hand. The cover screen and the back are both Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, so at least when this phone is folded, it should be very durable. You can also have a completely different setup on the cover and the main screen, including different wallpapers even. And I do like this because I can set up each screen based on which apps I use more often thin on it. I also really like the overall design of the Fold. There's not much changes from last gen, it's still very minimal, the back is matte, and it doesn't catch too many fingerprints. And this one that I have here is a new gray-green color, and I think it looks really pretty. A nice touch is that the aluminum frame matches the color too. The camera bump on this thing is definitely not small but it's still smaller than on the S20 Ultra. And I'd say this is still a pretty portable phone. When it's folded, it's pretty thick, but it's actually narrower than many other non-folding phones. I almost feel like the hinge is a bit too strong when it's new. It always takes me two hands to pry it open, but it does feel pretty satisfying to snap it open and closed. And the design makes it pretty much impossible to catch your finger in the hinge. It holds in most positions, and when it's fully folded, there's a small gap near the hinge. And just like last year, the Z Fold 4 has an IPX8 water resistance rating, but I would still try to not get it wet because the screen protector might come off. There's 
no dust resistance rating, probably because smaller dust particles can potentially get into the hinge and become stuck there. And it has a fingerprint scanner on the lock button, which I actually find more reliable than the underscreen ones. The software on this phone is also pretty special. Because it's running Android 12L, most apps have a custom layout that takes advantage of the larger screen. For example, you can see more videos when browsing in YouTube, and the mini player is also much larger. And the camera app has this feature where you can see your shots immediately. There may be some apps that are simply just enlarged to fit this larger screen, like Instagram. It looks kind of ugly, but you can switch the app's aspect ratio, and I think it's a pretty decent fix. You can also set it so that when you close or open this phone, the open app will automatically switch between the two screens. And I found this pretty useful. The only thing is, sometimes when you're switching from the smaller to the bigger screen, the app layout on the big screen might be stuck on the enlarged view. But beyond this bug, all the other features actually work pretty reliably, and it's overall a great experience. And when the Z Fold is bent to 90 degrees, some apps have a custom layout. For example, the camera app moves the preview to the top half. But most apps don't take advantage of this, so you're just left with this touchpad and some other controls. Flex mode is rarely useful as of now. But the best part about the software experience is multitasking. Unlike a typical Android phone, the Fold has the same taskbar as Android tablets, and it always stays there even when you're in an app. I found the taskbar especially useful for quickly entering split screen view, especially since I can pull up all my apps from it. Other Android phones can split screen too, but I never used it much because the screen simply isn't big enough to look at two apps at the same time. However, the Fold's main screen fits two apps really well, and I can see a good amount of content on both apps at the same time. I think this split screen configuration is great for doing work on this phone. And through Goodlock Multistar, you can make everything on the screen smaller while it's in split screen or pop-up view. And this is really nice because it helps you see a lot more content when multitasking. This feature really makes it feel like a much larger tablet. And since the screen is really high resolution, I don't find things difficult to see even at the smaller size. Although the Fold doesn't come with an S Pen, I think it's worth it to pick one up. Not only is it good for annotating screenshots and documents, note-taking on the Fold is surprisingly good. I don't really feel the crease even when writing text across it. And of course, you can also turn it sideways and just write on the top or bottom portion. This phone only supports either the S Pen Pro or Fold Edition, with a retracting tip to protect the screen. And I'm actually kind of glad that this isn't a tiny pen that fits in the phone, because I can see myself writing lots of notes on the Fold. This Fold S Pen is really good. The round shape with a flat edge feels very comfortable. It's also very light and doesn't have to be charged. And the button is nice too for quick erasing. I just wish it could magnetize to the side of the phone. I mean, it fits. But for now, to bring it around with the phone, you'll probably need a case with a built-in S Pen holder. Overall, the writing experience is pretty good on the Fold. The main screen is wide and tall enough to be comfortable. It's a lot better than on the S20 Ultra, which I mostly only used for quick reminder notes because the screen is just not wide enough. However, the Fold screen might still be a bit too small if you want to handwrite all of your notes on it. In that case, a tablet will be much more comfortable. But for me, I typically type most of my notes and then just handwrite things like math equations and annotations. And I'd say the Fold screen size is very adequate for that. Honestly, for use cases similar to mine, the Fold could be a better writing tablet than a budget tablet, since the screen is OLED and 120Hz, which could potentially justify its price. But do note that the S Pen doesn't work on the cover screen. Kind of wish it did, and you need the more expensive S Pen Pro to get air actions, which is when you can control certain things on the phone with pen gestures. But after playing around with them on the S20 Ultra, I don't I don't think air actions are worth it. This year, the Z Fold actually got pretty good cameras. Most likely, the main lens is the same one on the S22. So not as good as the S22 Ultra, but if you like taking self photos and videos, this is probably the best phone for it. You can see a full preview of what you're filming, and the main camera is just a lot better than any front cameras I've tried. The background has some natural blur, and it does really well in lower light situations too, much better than any front cameras ever could. The back main lens is also 50 megapixels, and you can toggle it on for some high resolution photos. And those do look a bit sharper than the regular 12 megapixel mode. As you can see, these leaves here are quite a bit sharper, but I feel like the processing is a bit different in this mode. Look at the sky in all these photos. They're just less blue and I don't think they look as nice. And in general, I think the processing is a bit better with a new SOC. Look at this low light shot. 
Compared to the S22 Ultra with the older chip, the new processing on the Z Fold is just a lot crisper. And overall, I think the Fold also hits the correct white balance more consistently. And unlike the iPhone, the main lens on the Fold can focus pretty close, so you can get some kind of macro shots with a high quality main lens. The videos from the main sensor are now pretty good too. I actually find the Z Fold video looks less sharpened and more natural when compared to the iPhone. And then comparing to the S22 Ultra, there's basically no difference. I'm actually beginning to like the Samsung video slightly more than the iPhones now. There's definitely been a good change up in their video processing algorithm. Now, the biggest downside against the S22 Ultra is the Fold doesn't have 10 times telephoto lens, but its three times telephoto lens isn't bad at all. It has very nice sharpness and colors throughout these shots. The ultra wide has a pretty basic sensor and lens with no focus, but with the newer processing, I actually think it's better than the S22 Ultra. Particularly in the corners, there's a bit more sharpness. There's also a bit more color and contrast. Besides the back cameras, the Fold has has an additional selfie camera on the cover screen and also an underscreen camera. The underscreen one looks so bad that it's kind of funny. I would maybe only use it for Zoom calls. But the selfie camera on the cover screen is actually pretty decent in good lighting. I think it keeps up with the front cameras on the S22 Ultra and 14 Pro. But still, it's far worse than the Fold's main lens, especially here in this lower light shot. I think since it's so easy to use the main lens for selfies, these other two cameras will probably barely get used. I've been really enjoying using the Fold to film own vlogs. It's nice to be able to use a back camera and see a full preview of the shot on the cover screen. Also, I can easily frame up ultra wide selfie photos and videos, which is a pretty cool look. Now, I was concerned about this phone's battery life at first because it has a much larger screen than the S20 Ultra, but a smaller battery. But it was honestly better than I expected. The 8 Plus Gen 1 turns out to be a pretty significant SoC upgrade. After two hours of scrolling through social media, the Fold almost kept up with the S20 Ultra, only dropped dropping one extra percent, and it did beat out the iPhone 14 Pro, although the iPhone does have a much smaller battery. For lighter tasks, even when using the big screen all day, I've never felt like the battery wasn't enough. But when it comes to gaming, the bigger screen does consume more battery. After three rounds of wildlife extreme stress test, the Fold dropped a whopping 33% over the 25% drop by the S22 Ultra. However, this isn't an extremely big drop, considering the iPhone 14 Pro dropped 32%. Overall, the battery life of the Fold isn't bad at all. I think it's enough for all day of basic use on the big screen. And if you use the cover screen occasionally, you can definitely save a bit more battery. Now, gaming on the big screen is definitely pretty fun and the performance is really good too. It's actually quite a significant step up against the S20 Ultra with around 10 to 20% better performance depending on the task. And I think the 8 Plus Gen 1 just generates less heat in general. After 10 minutes running a sustained gaming benchmark, the Fold is nearly 50% faster than the S22 Ultra. So if you game on a phone for a long time, then the Fold is much better than the S20 Ultra, although it's still quite a bit behind the iPhone. And because this is a folding phone, only half of it gets hot. The area near the cameras reached around 37 degrees Celsius, which is about typical temperature of a phone when gaming. And the other half is basically at idle temperature, about 32 degrees Celsius. It doesn't feel hot at all. So even during long gaming sessions, you have at least half the phone that won't make your hands sweaty. Because heat is only dissipated on the side with the cameras, there's nothing especially good or bad about the Fold's heat dissipation. It still thermal throttles after just a few minutes. Overall, I think 8 Plus Gen 1 is a really good SoC upgrade. And since the Fold 4 only comes with the Snapdragon SoC, it can be a pretty huge upgrade for the Exynos regions. So yeah, I'm really impressed by this folding phone. It provides a much more comfortable experience for reading things, watching videos, and playing games. It's also pretty good for note-taking. The software is surprisingly well-refined with excellent multitasking support. I really enjoyed having essentially a small tablet that folds into a phone that can fit in my pocket. But there's still long-term durability concerns with the main screen. All right, that's it. Subscribe and I'll see you next time.